going to just do a little quick five minute video here to kind of show you some of the cool little bits about it and uh, kind of where we're at with the car right now in, the, in December. So let's, uh, let's take a look. Let's start with the battery here. Uh, this is a BMW i8 battery and it's right now out of the car as you can see and it will be mounted in the car in the future. But right now we have it temporarily connected to be able to give the rest of the car high voltage. And as the high voltage power comes in here, it ends up being connected to the inverter. Uh, the inverter is supplied by Reinhardt. Uh, we've talked about them a bit before. If you've seen the Speed Academy videos, these guys make inverters for EV racing. Um, they've been into uh, electric motorcycle racing, Formula E, Formula One. So they've, they've got a lot of experience with this stuff. Outside of the inverter, these three phase cables go to the electric motor, which is bolted directly to the bell housing uh, or the bell housing adapter on the back of Kels's uh, 4.2 liter VQ there. So this is the power distribution box. And what the power distribution box does is it takes the high voltage in from the battery and it distributes it to the inverter, to the charger, and to the DC-DC converter. And in this system, there's something called contactors, which break or make the connection between the high voltage battery and the rest of the high voltage components in the system. And there's something called HVIL in the system as well that can detect if any of the components have been unplugged, it'll know to never close those contactors and never give the other components high voltage. So what you're looking at here is the motor directly attached to an adapter plate that we made that's bolted to the engine. And this adapter plate is basically a spacer between the engine and uh, the bell housing of the transmission. So basically what happens here is there's a, a shaft that's directly connected the crankshaft of the engine to the shaft of this motor. So whenever this motor is spinning, the engine is spinning, and whenever the engine is spinning, the motor is spinning. This means that even if we're driving in full EV mode, the gas engine will still be spinning and it'll still be making gas engine sounds. So that's kind of cool. Um, and it also means that if something catastrophic happens, Anywhere in the drivetrain of the engine, unfortunately the vehicle has to come to a complete stop. So hopefully we don't throw a rod or damage the motor or, you know, break something in the transmission because there's really no way to, to stop any of that stuff, so. All right, so since the flywheel is gone and on this car the, the triggering is on the flywheel, we had to machine up a custom triggering and a bracket for our new crank angle sensor. So we've got this cooling reservoir for the, uh, the inverter and the motor. Uh, and that flows through it using a Tesla water pump. Uh, through the system, it, it uh, comes back into this really cool uh, heat exchanger that uh, I got from my friend Bill. He's got a really cool 240SX you should check out. Um, I think he calls it 240RS Maxi. He's got lots of cool 80s and 90s uh, period correct parts on that car. Anyway, this is like a 90s Benetton Formula One. Um, I think it's probably a little cooler that uh, we got from Bill. And it fits really cool in this rear license plate opening and it's the perfect size for the inverter the motor cooling. So kind of the system goes out of the pump, through the inverter, through the motor, comes back through this heat exchanger, and then goes back into the swirl pot. And on the top of the swirl pot, we've got a little bleed tank and overflow reservoir. All right, well, now we're going to spin the motor for you guys and show you what uh, this little electric motor can do. All right, so using Motex Display Creator software, we've got this really cool looking custom display that uh, I've designed to show me everything that I want to see when I'm on the on the racetrack. So trying to go over this really quick, we've got RPM at the top here, we've got the drive mode here, so when we cycle through here between electric, gasoline, and hybrid modes. We've got isolation here, which basically is an indication of the isolation between the high voltage system and the rest of the chassis. On the left side we have battery and motor temperature. The bottom left here we have the curves map, which basically is how much energy we're trying to recover up to the battery and how much power we're deploying. So we can change that on the steering wheel to the different modes and basically we'll have a low mode where the thing is basically not active and a full mode where it's just going to basically fully deplete the battery very quickly and that'll be like a time attack mode. Then when I hold the, the button I go into the kind of the status mode pages and I can cycle through these and have a lot of different pages to check things like the engine, uh, the chassis and the high voltage system. And then on this page we have all the high voltage statuses and what's cool about this page is it tells you the status of a number of different items on the, of the control enumerated in plain English so you can you know, clearly tell what's happening. So if we turn the ignition on, we can see the negative and positive contactors close. 
there's a no, no drival case uh, signal coming through, so that's why the inverter is not starting, and as a result, the inverter is disabled. So if we just press the start stop button, we'll be allowed to drive for 15 seconds, and after that point, it'll shut itself off. So when I press start, you can see now the inverter is enabled, and there's a big green uh, notification that driving is enabled. You can hear the water pump started, and the system's basically ready to go. So if I give it some throttle now, we'll wake the thing up. And you can see, we ran out of 15 seconds before we started moving, so we got the inverter disabled because we've run out of time. When you hold the start-stop button, it acts as a starter motor for the, uh, for the gasoline engine. So let's imagine we're neutral, we want to start the engine, we want to warm it up. So we hold this button, it will start and hold the RPM around 200 for a few seconds, and then it'll gradually bring it up to around 800 RPM, and then at that point we'll fire the injectors in the ignition and bring the engine to life. So here we go. Pretty cool, huh? Jesse just shit himself a bit under there. You can hear it sounds like a normal engine, but I can assure you there's no gas tank in the car. That was not the engine running. That was just the motor spinning it. And uh, you can imagine when the engine's on top of that, this thing's going to be pretty snappy. So we're going to finish up all the little bits, and then we're going to get this bad boy on the track.